Do you feel? Ah. Uh, ooh. Ooh. Now this. Welcome, welcome. This is the classic. Welcome. This is Luke Corns. Hi guys. One of the OG YouTubers who has paved the way on this platform. Transforming from a teenage heartthrob to a world-class filmmaker, he has become one of the best storytellers on YouTube with over 2 million subscribers. And in a world flooded with people's highlight reels, Luke is a creator that keeps things real. I don't know what to do. And now, I'm broke. So today, we're digging a little deeper into his mind to uncover the painful realities of being a successful YouTuber. Well, to Creator Confessions. Comfortably uncomfortable conversations on our couch with creators. <laughs> yeah. Are you comfortable or uncomfortable? Um, the way I'm sitting, yeah, no, I'm comfortable. <laughs> well, not for long. Luke will be answering three questions, one from each jar of increasing degrees of vulnerability. If Luke chooses not to answer, there will be a very severe punishment. What's the worst that could happen? You just get slapped in the face with a tortilla. Oh. Fair, fair. <laughs> Naturally, right? We will also get slapped because, you know, it's it's a team effort. So you guys answer the questions too, or you? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm down. I'll do it. It's a long journey. Are you down? I'm super down for anything. Okay. Cool. So this is like the easy level? This is the easy level. Level one. Level one. I'm excited. It says, how often have you burned out on YouTube? What was the worst time and how did you recover? Ooh, do you see? I burn out after every project. <gasps> Who would have thought? The idea of jumping into another project is like super daunting. And I'm like, how am I gonna do this all again? It's not only like shooting the entire time, it's like the mental focus. It's like, I'm focused on this story and that's pretty much all I think about uh, from waking up to going to bed. And then the editing, that that that's pretty much from waking up to going to bed. That's all I do. Yeah. Yeah. But do you have like a time that you remember like it was the worst burnout you've had? Where are we going? Yeah, it was with this recent project. That was like three weeks of kind of shooting. And then the editing just took so long. And then I posted it and then YouTube deleted the video. All that work. I, I almost didn't even care about posting it again. Again, I was like, I'm so over this video. I want to move on to a new one. That just happens. When I, when I post a video, I lose attachment to it. You never finish a piece, you abandon it. And that helps me not care if it underperforms. The baby is out of the nest. And that's, <laughs> does that make sense? The baby's yeah, out, yeah. Have you found anything that helps you like burn out less? Oh. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know what helps me burn out less is having the next project be something very different. I think that helps me with burnout, but again, that's not sustainable, and I don't think that's a, a good method to avoid burnout. So you would say you still haven't fully, like, figured out no. the burnout situation? No, I haven't. Me too. <laughs> but it's really interesting for me to hear how both of you said, like, when you're going through that burnout phase, like, you're excited for the next project, and that gives you energy. When I was in the burnout, yeah. I was like, give me another project i was like no i need to lay here give me a coffin like give me a like a week well that's what it is too for me it's like i i do need like e even if it's one day of not thinking about anything because when i post a video i'm like okay i am done and then the next day i'm like kind of ready and then the day after i'm like so many possibilities i want to do everything but you also said like you're posting less than you used to yeah which i guess has that made it better oh for, for burnout yes but for surviving in this planet, no. <laughs> if, if the video does poorly, then uh, I'm in a pickle. If it does well, it's like fine. Yeah, I'm trying to fine tune and, and streamline my process. So there has to be that balance that I don't have yet. When you find out, let us know. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, man, it's hard. Good, I mean, yeah, I feel like you definitely answered that. <laughs> <laughs> you're good, you're good. <laughs> All right. Round two. Okay. Wish me luck. So this is harder? Yeah. Was that hard? No, yeah, that wasn't hard. That was like a typical interview question. Yeah, that was too standard. We're so funny. No, but I like that. Uh-oh. Do you feel... Uh, we have no idea where we're going, but we're going. Do you feel YouTube has affected your mental health? If yes, how? A hundred percent. Easy yes. I don't have experiences with other fields of oh thank you other careers and i feel like every career has a level of mental health ups and downs i i, I equate it to running a business and it's that problem solving the constant problem solving even when you have a, a video that does super well it's like okay but you can't get too comfortable because you have to do this again next time every time 
but I also feel like the analytics are way too in depth. I feel like it's too much information about us as people and what people like, what they don't like. At what point when we're speaking, it's boring. It's like too much almost, but also you get addicted to that data. So it's like a horrible system that we're, we're in and it's just filled with highs and lows and it never ends. It's absolutely absurd. But how has it affected your mental health? Affects every aspect of your confidence. And even after doing this for so long, I feel like I've learned that with every high comes a low, unfortunately. I, actually, I don't know if I believe that, sort of. I don't know. Finding that balance and not riding the highs too high. I don't know if that's good advice, so. Huh. Very confusing. I'm curious though that your mental health has gotten better or worse after you've become like a big creator on the platform. I think for me, minus the rush of whatever you get from having attention on you, it's more so feeling like what you're doing is resonating with people and what you're doing actually has purpose. For you to believe it is one thing, but I think to have people tell you and have the numbers reflect, it makes it so easy to, to believe in yourself. And I think that's the main thing. And I, it's kind of sad that how I see myself is is based on how, how things perform and how people, the comments. So yeah, that that's something that every YouTuber can probably agree that it's very heavy. This lifestyle is definitely not for everyone. After understanding that all that data triggers your mental health, how much time do you spend looking at the analytics, reading the comments? Well, that's the thing that I don't like is when things are doing poorly, I avoid it. And when things are doing well, I indulge in that like instant dopamine rush. It's like, let me check live views. Oh, things are doing super well. I'm getting all these good comments. I could check that once an hour, honestly, and still kind of get that like instant rush. I'm sure all other creators can relate. It's addicting, especially when things are picking up and all that work pays off. On the other side of the spectrum, it's not a good feeling when things aren't performing. I don't know, I have no advice for this because I'm trying to figure it out and I haven't after a decade. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I'll just say this real quick because this is the most important thing is when you put your effort into something and that performs even at a decent level, that feels way better than putting out something that you know is just gonna do well. And I think that's what makes it easier because I'm focused on making the best content I can and I'm less concerned about the numbers. Even when something doesn't perform well, I'm still, I still feel like I, I uh, did something positive. So that's what I focus on. Look around and acknowledge that something is beautiful, but if you don't feel it, it's kind of meaningless. I feel the same. One interesting thing that I find is us as small creators, looking at someone like you and being like i wish I, i'd be able to get those views and stuff but you're dealing with the same well, thing well it's funny because like, i feel so small yeah exactly you feel smaller <laughs> <than> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> like Sorry. just take a look at how many views this have there's never a point at which you're like i'm good and that's the point and that's why it's it's a scary thought yeah. you're never happy or satisfied the bottom line is is the passion has to be first and your pride in the in the product itself is what matters and that's what i yeah in a nutshell that's what i focus on amazing who yeah, all right <laughs> we got it <laughs> this could be an hour yeah oh, oh, oh. we'll keep it civilized and i'm nervous about this no. one how could that because i want to that was a third. Yeah. <laughs> i have a good feeling about this one what are you struggling with the most in life right now that most people don't know about? Oof, there's some uh, personal one. Well, I don't even know if I... Hey, tortillas, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it. I mean, I get it. What are you struggling the most? This sucks. Do you think there are ones that are... Because this can kind of remind... Because I was just going to touch back about like YouTube and views, but it's like we already talked about that. I don't know. Chuck it, chuck it over the you're shoulder. Getting another, you're getting another one. <laughs> I think that might be a good option for us to go. Let's see. What are you most afraid of in life right now? Ooh, now this is <laughs> juicy. Why did you read that so quick? Because <laughs> if you get this over with now. Because <laughs> I was nervous. Now that's a little nervous, but I'm excited.
how much time do I have to think? 30 seconds? Take no, you time. take your time, man. We'll get the tortilla ready. <laughs> One thing that I'm scared of is losing my spark and passion for life. And I see this happen to people and counter that I always am trying to look for new things and new sparks and passion. But I'm like, at what point am I going to run out of like that? I don't know. I just seen it happen to people. They lose that passion for their work. They lose their dreams. This is so deep now. Have you felt at like your spark? Dwindle? Yeah, I thought my I was losing that passion or, around like the beginning of the pandemic. Because I'm like, I'm sick of just showing up at places and wandering around traveling. I'm like, what else is there? And that's when I started brainstorming about like couch surfing and like meeting with people and telling their stories. And that revamped the whole uh, passion I had for travel and seeing the whole. But I'm like, when that dies out, what's next? So that's like the constant like fear that I'm kind of in the back of my mind. Do you feel like your passion for storytelling and filmmaking is something that you're afraid to lose or, or not? Based on my, my, the last 10 years of my life, I think that's like a stable passion I have. Filmmaking, storytelling. Yeah, cause you wait, you've been doing it for even longer, you know? 12 years. Yeah, but I even started, I even started before that, but I just didn't post them on YouTube. I think as long as I have passion for life, I won't lose that. I think uh, storytelling and filmmaking is my medium to express my joy for life. So is the fear of losing that spark, the fear of, in a sense, losing yourself? Mm, yeah, I think a little bit. Mainly just like waking up and being so excited at like what I can do, these possibilities. And to be able to film these projects is the biggest blessing I could ever dream for. And I don't think my passion and spark in life lies relies on that freedom. But I'm like, if I don't have that freedom, like, I wonder what would happen to my spark. It's almost like I need to maintain this. I need to keep having this freedom. It's not about uh, making a lot of money. It's just about making it work. I don't need a lot of money for this, this lifestyle. And I recognize that privilege I have because that's not something anyone could just do. What a privilege that is, truthfully. What about you guys? You have fears like that or? Um... Is, yeah, I'll let you speak first if you want. You can go, if you've got an answer. Like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. There's definitely a fear of not living my life to the fullest, mm -hmm. you know, of every time I want to give into being lazy mm -hmm. or not pushing myself further. I feel like there's always that nagging fear in the back of my head of like, I'm going to regret not doing it. Mm. You know, if I don't live it to the fullest, if I don't have this spark or whatever it is, this curiosity for life, then what is the point? Do yep. you know? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. Like, am I making the most out of it or not? One, I think it's a great way to think because it pushes you to like experience this life to the fullest, but at the same time, it does add a lot of pressure on yourself. Yep. Is there a balance between this of trying to live life to the fullest and actually just living a pure, happy, content life? Yep. And I don't think I'll ever find that Relatable. place yep. where it's like a perfect balance. And that's something that I think I'm only coming to terms with in the past two years yeah. and learning to be okay with that. That is life. Like, I don't know. I like, you know, balance now. I'm like so over this word of balance or I'm like, I will never find balance. I'm going to stop striving for that. Yeah. You know, whatever balance is, is going to change in every phase of my life. For sure. I actually like that. Like, let's, let's get rid of this whole goal of balance. There's so much pressure to yeah. find that balance. And I'm just like, so that, that has pressure to me too. I'm almost like maybe it is fine to kind of be back and forth a little bit. That's my whole life. When I'm in a low, it's almost like, okay, I need to figure something out. Balance is almost complacency. And it's like, I'm fine with where I'm at, which is beautiful. Maybe that's not how I'm meant to be. Oh, you can do it. You can do medium. What is this for you? I'm really soft. Yeah. Okay. A bit harder, come yeah. on. My <laughs> <laughs> anticipation is really scary. Okay, go, go. Oh, that was a lot of so much rage in that. You were like, I'm sorry. Don't make it pussy slap, okay, though. Okay, I won't. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Okay. No, I no want to slap you, though. No, no. Please. I got, no. Please. No. Please. I'll do it on this side, because Luke already got me good here. Yeah, that was a, you got it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs>
Okay, okay, I'm glad. Was it worth it? Definitely.